<coughs> hello, <coughs> hello again, stat students. This is um, for today's work. This is the um, uh, continuation of the volume of cones and pyramids. Um, this is a particular word problem. It's uh, number 34. Um, the lateral area of a cone is 71.6 square millimeters, and the slant height is six millimeters. What's the volume of the cone? So um, we have a number of things here that we are going to need to make sure we understand. First of all, that we're dealing with a cone, um, and they give us the lateral area of that. We need to remember that the lateral area of a pyramid is equal to one half the perimeter of the base times the slant height. Now, particularly in a cone, there's some things that are eliminated here. So first of all, we're gonna have 71.6 for the lateral area. And then we're gonna fill in one half and then the perimeter of a circle or the base of a cone is two pi r. So when we write two pi r, the twos cancel. So we don't have the one half, we get rid of the two, we have just pi r, and then times the slant height. Well, the slant height they say is six. So we have 71.6 equals six pi r. So <clears throat> the radius becomes 71.6 divided by six pi. Now you have to be really careful when you're calculating this. Because if you go 71.6 divided by six, and then times pi, without the parentheses, you're not gonna get the correct answer. So our radius is equal to, so we're finding the volume. So we know that we're one third base area times the height. Well, we don't have now the height, we have the slant height. So again, we're gonna need to draw a circle for a base of a cone, that's gonna look like this. This is six. We're looking for this value right here. And we have, well, I found R when we calculate this. So <clears throat> I use my calculator, I'm gonna go 71.6 divided by, now I need to put parentheses, six and then times pi, close the parentheses and there's my answer, 3.798. We're going to say 3.8. Now, I'm going to use my calculator because I know that that length goes right there. And so to find that height, I'm going to have to take the square root of, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So <clears throat> on my in my calculator, um, this is gonna look like this. I'm gonna go h is equal to the square root of six squared minus 3.8 squared. So I can use this value to um, help me be a little more pre precise. So second square root, and I go six squared minus, now that's, I can refer to as second answer, and then square it, and I'll get what my height is. They say it's 4.6. So now I can I have everything that I need for this formula. So one third base area that would be 3.8 squared pi, and then times are 4.6. So if I calculate that, I'm gonna go 3.8 squared second pi, and then times 4.6, and then I'm gonna divide by three because of multiplying by a third. And I get 69.55. Um, because of some rounding, the book um, says 70.2, um, but that's, um, um, if you look at these numbers, particularly this number, this 
number is actually quite a bit bigger than 4.6. So I would accept an answer on a test of 69.6 to um, 70.2. So uh, the book's answer is 70.2 because they're using precise answer uh, numbers. So um, just be aware of that. Um, sometimes these answers can be off um, on the decimals just a, a little bit. It's off by less than one. It's about 0.6 off, but that's okay when we're dealing with rounded values. So um, that is um, problem number <clears throat> 34. Now I wanted to go to number 52 because it was a review, um, but it's something um, that a review of chapter 11, which is also important here in chapter 12. Um, so let's go to that problem. Okay, so we have um, this figure and it wants to know the area of the shaded region. So the shaded region is the big circle. And the big circle is going to be equal to eight squared pi. So that's the big circle. Now I'm gonna subtract from it the triangle. Now that triangle is going to be an equilateral triangle and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we need to add to it the circle, the smaller circle. So we're gonna need the radius for that. So we need to look at this picture and we're gonna enlarge a bit for this equilateral triangle. It goes from here to here. Now, and to here, and to here. So what you need to know is all of those angles are 60, but when we divide them in half, we have 30. If I were to drop down my apothem, that would give me that area or that um, length right there. Now, we know that this is eight. So that means this is four, and that would mean that this is four radical three. And so the entire length is four radical three. Now, um, since this distance is four, um, wait a minute. Oh, so I, I'm sorry. Um, I found this distance right here. So I now know the radius in this um, of that smaller circle. So I now for here, I have four squared pi. Okay, so the distance from the center to there is the apothem of that triangle. And we have that length right there as four. So um, we have that. Now we need this triangle. So we have this big triangle now, I believe um, that the easiest way to do it would be um, you could use the uh, equilateral triangle formula. However, um, we do know that that length is eight, that length is four. So that full distance, that would be the height. We could have one half, um, eight radical three times, sorry. times 12, that would be eight plus four. So just be aware there's some tricky things there. Um, I just think that's the easiest way to work that out. So we're gonna have 64 pi minus, and this is gonna be 48 radical three plus 16 pi. Now we can, probably make it a little easier just by making it 80 pi, adding the 16 and the 64 minus 48 radical three. Now, if I was asking for an exact answer, this would be the answer. If I asked you to calculate it, then you would need to calculate it with your calculator and it would just be as simple as 80 times pi minus 48 square root of three 
and we would get 168.2. So there's your answer, and that is the answer that gives you. Um, so I just wanted to go over those questions and make sure that you had seen the work on that. So um, hopefully that's helpful. If you have any other questions or you need to just come in and say hello, um, don't hesitate um, for Zoom today. Zoom is from 8.30 to 9.15 today. All right, um, we'll talk to you later.